Hi everybody, welcome back to my floor. I am back. I return to you with slightly more sun on my skin. <laughs> a touch of laryngitis from shouting a lot over the weekend and I'm covered in bug bites, but I'm very happy and I'm very happy to be back with all of you. Now, I'm gonna keep this brief mostly because I don't have a whole lot of voice right now, but I do want to give a very brief explanation of what we're going to be doing this week because it's nothing really super interesting maybe in the grand scheme of YouTube, but for me it is very important because you guys are familiar with this. This is my watercolor sketchbook. I've been working like hell in this book ever since I bought it, and I don't know if you know this about me or if I've mentioned it before, but I have never finished a sketchbook in my life. Ever. In my life. I want to. I want to finish this sketchbook in particular, mostly because I'm tired of complaining about the paper that's inside it. I feel like I mention it in every damn video that I make. <laughs> And I'm sure that must be tiresome for all of you to be like, all right, we get it. <laughs> we know you don't like the book. But the thing is, like, I do like this book. I like being able to work inside this book, but I have a really hard time moving on to another sketchbook until I have finished this one. I don't know why. Maybe it's the completionist in me. I get this sort of way when I play video games also. I have to finish what I started. It's very important. Can't start a new project until the old one is done. Now, the thing of it is that this book has 36 sheets of paper in it, which means 72 workable pages, and I've been doing both the front and back sides of the pages of this book, like an idiot. <laughs> Not that I regret it because I have done some very good paintings on each of the sides of the pages, but um, that means that I have to put in double the work in order to fill this sketchbook because, once again, for the sake of posterity, I refuse to stop working on both sides of each page. I think that's just how I do things. Like, I have to have to be consistent. I have to finish what I started. <laughs> and because I'm so hellbent on finishing this book before the end of the year, I am just going to be doing some paintings in this book. And it's going to be pretty low-key. You're gonna see quite a few of them. Frankly, I just felt like doing whatever the heck I wanted to do. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, first painting. So the first thing that I did was I did a small study of some potted plants. And you'll see in front of me there on the table is a bunch of little bottles, and that is because I chose to do this picture in India ink. Um, I've been really falling in love with inks lately. It's something that I'd always wanted to try, and it's been very nice to familiarize with myself with how they work. I think that it kind of fulfills both a love of the applications of watercolor with the permanency of acrylics, which is something that I, I find is a really nice marriage. Those two attributes work together very well in India ink, and they glaze really well, especially on paper that like the one in the sketchbook may not be so friendly to glazing because of the permanency and the waterproofness of the inks. And I really just wanted to do something simple and ended up really enjoying this project and getting to paint all of these beautiful, you know, shadows and tones of the way that light hits plant life. Um, because of the organic nature of plants, it's really hard to screw something like this up, which made the process very enjoyable and very low pressure and I just kept moving along and putting in all of my values on these leaves and the cactuses and etc and so forth until I was satisfied with my end product and it was really fun it just reminds me of really cool botanical illustrations or um, plant illustrations that I see in other people's sketchbooks and it was something I'd always wanted to emulate before and I think I was really able to achieve it by using the inks and like I said they're so forgiving I mean hell I even used white ink on some spots where I accidentally made a few smudges and because the white ink is opaque it was very easy to cover those mistakes up so that I didn't have to look at them anymore Thank you. 
Second painting that I did was of some fly agaric mushrooms, otherwise known as Amanita muscaria. They're probably the most famous kinds of mushrooms in the world, those red-capped mushrooms with the white spots on them. And I also did this painting in India ink. You're gonna see that there is no footage for part of this video, my bad. <laughs> Suddenly there are caps completely filled in, and that is because I forgot to press the record button on my phone. Uh, that's okay though. Minor setback, but I just continued along. I didn't want to let it stop me from continuing to uh, record this process because this was a painting that I found incredibly enjoyable. I think it was because how zoomed in my reference picture was of these mushrooms. It gave me a lot of opportunity to get in there with all the little detail and the variances of hue and the different parts of the stem and the shadows and the light that sort of reflects on the top of the mushroom caps the beautiful out of focus greenery in the foreground and background it was just a very pretty picture and incredibly enjoyable to work with it also gave me an opportunity to play with a little bit of masking fluid so that i could get those white spots painting number three so this painting is what I like to call an ode to breakfast. I decided to do a painting on one side of a cup of coffee and then on the other side of a stack of pancakes with all of these berries on them. And you're gonna see that there's quite a bit of wires on my desk in front of me and that is because this night uh, I had a remote art night with my boyfriend. We decided to do a cute little phone date together where we each did some drawing and I did a little bit of painting and uh, that's why there's so many wires. One of them is my headphones, which was plugged into my phone where I was video calling him and had my reference picture pulled up and then I used my old phone to record the video of this particular speed paint. Um, and the quality's not that bad. I'm, I'm actually really impressed. I'm glad I kept my old phone for that purpose. Again, another painting that I found very enjoyable. I just love these, you know, low pressure, very easygoing paintings where I just work from reference and do little studies of values and dimension and practice my drawing skills. It was really fun. And of course, I'm just such a big fan of drawing food. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I think it's because I like eating food and I think that food is beautiful. <laughs> so any opportunity that I have to put on paper and paint a subject that I enjoy looking at, that is always going to be a good time to me. And it gives me an opportunity to be a little bit braver, like maybe not so much with the cup of coffee, but with the pancakes in particular, because there were so many details, especially in all those little berries that were sort of scattered around the stack of pancakes, it gave me a good opportunity to like practice the patience to like pay attention to highlights and shadows and values because berries aren't all one uniform color. Blueberries, like they're a combination pretty much of blue and purple and uh, blackberries, you know, they come in all sorts of varieties of colors, blue, purple, pink, red. The highlights, of course, were nice and white. I did pull out that opaque white India ink to do a lot of the highlights in the coffee and on the berries in the pancake picture, but it was just really fun. I, I can't really say it enough. Like these sorts of paintings that are just really simple and require very little brain power. Love it. <laughs> I'll never stop loving doing stuff like this. I would say the only downside of me doing a lot of the paintings in the, that you're going to see in this video is that uh, it's not a terribly creative process. Like it's not stretching my imagination very much. It really is just me sort of like practicing studies and brushing up on my painting skills. But I think coming up in the future, you're gonna probably see a few more projects that require a little bit more creativity, actual creativity from me. But in the meantime, I'm having a marvelous time doing these. Okay, so I'm plugging away at this, I'm doing pretty good so far. I have done a drawing that took me several hours today <laughs> over several different segments of my day that I'm very proud of and I don't know about you but every once in a while when you've done an hours long sketch 
sometimes you get a little intimidated over how well you're going to perform when you start putting color on it. So let me show you what I did. Okay, so here it is. This is a perspective drawing. It is based off a reference picture that I found uh, on Pexels.com. You know that's my fave. And I am so proud of this sketch. I did all of it by hand with the help of a few rulers, which sit right over there. Please ignore. <laughs> Please ignore the <laughs> nail clippers. Um, but anyhow, uh, I have painstakingly put this on paper. And now comes the hard part. I'm going to try using some kind of color medium to complete this illustration. And then I think that's going to be it for this week and we will come back another week to put some more projects in it. As of now, I have managed to fill up half of my sketchbook. Uh, I think I counted the pages and I'm like just over half, like one full page over half. And then I've got the other half to do. But this is it, guys. This is me trying to plug this away because I am so eager to finally get a sketchbook completed. It was a goal of mine for 2021. I'm gonna freaking do it. So wish me luck. It's time to put some paint on this puppy. All right, finally, this one. Oh dear. So this was by far the most frightening <laughs> of all of the paintings that I did in this video. And uh, as you can see it's probably because of the amount of precision that it took to actually complete the drawing. It's so many straight lines and trying to make sure that you know your perspective is proper and it's just one point perspective so it's not too terribly complicated and I had a really good reference picture so I wasn't really worried about not getting my values right but I bounce around all over this drawing when I paint it because it's just too risky to try to like fit colors next to each other at the risk of them bleeding because the last thing I wanted to do was to ruin the beautiful illustration that I had done with all of those precise lines. It was very important to me that I really take my time and kind of go over things slowly and as patiently as possible. And you know how much I have a hard time with doing that. <laughs> I probably should learn or have should have learned by now that it's best for me to not be in so much of a rush, but I can't really help it. Sometimes I just get so excited to like make it happen. <laughs> What else can I say? So, I mean, like, it's really cool. I mean, you can see me doing in some of like the stonework on one of the walkways there and those little details that you put into watercolor paintings so that they look, you know, at a distance or you have to like separate your lines so that they're closer together in the, you know, far background than they are in the foreground. That kind of stuff is really awesome. Like it really jazzes me up. So I had a lot of fun putting in a lot of the smaller details on this, but at the same time, it was also pretty nerve wracking because there are so many tiny little windows and doors and things that I had painted in here that I was worried that it just wasn't gonna turn out looking good. And granted, there are some spots that I think are a little bit sloppy, but because of how detailed this picture is, I think they're not super noticeable. And I'm overall very happy with the end result of this picture. I think it turned out really good. I think it is appropriately colorful. It makes my heart happy. And I had a good time painting it. Okay friends, that concludes the paintings that we are going to complete for this week in our efforts to fill this Moleskine watercolor sketchbook. Now, the whole purpose of me doing this once again is because I want to finish a sketchbook, but also there's another reason and that is because I bought another watercolor sketchbook which I'm very excited to eventually share with you guys and I bought it in April. Remember when I said I bought too many art supplies in April? Does anybody remember that? <laughs> Are you sick of me saying it yet? <laughs> so anyway, um, that means that we will revisit this project again so that we can fill up the other half 
of the sketchbook in whatever way that we can and of course it will be featured in some other YouTube videos as well but now that I've gotten past the halfway point of this book I'm quite confident that I can finish it before the end of 2021 and of course I'm not going to be buying any other watercolor sketchbooks until uh, I finish this one because I have quite a few <laughs> and I'm very interested to show you what they look like at some point but for right now I'm going to keep you in suspense. Thank you for joining me on this very frantic art project this week. Um, as unstructured as it was, I am certainly glad to share it with you and I'm very happy that you're here with me to see it. Um, I will see you next week. I love you. Until then, ciao everybody.